everyone. Welcome to our Resilience Links interview series, The Expert Take. My name is Clarissa Perkins, co-host of the show. In this interview series, we interview resilience experts and get their take on resilience and its role in development. I'm here today with Dr. Greg Collins. Greg is the Associate Vice President for Resilience and International Development and a research professor at the University of Arizona. Previously, Greg served as the Deputy Assistant Administrator at USAID, where he established the Bureau's Center for Resilience. So welcome, Greg. We're happy to have you here. Thanks so much, Clarissa. So how did you get involved in development? Well, you know, I grew up in a household that was very oriented towards social justice. My parents were very actively involved uh, in working on HIV AIDS issues in the San Francisco Bay Area, and then got also involved uh, in the anti-apartheid movement, which connected me to South Africa. Uh, and I actually uh, was in South Africa in 1994 during that historic election in which President Mandela got elected. And it really hooked me into uh, to working in Sub-Saharan Africa. And then I go on to spend um, the early years of my career in Northern Kenya, Somalia, and South Sudan. So it really set the stage for my interest, typically in resilience uh, within the field of international development. Uh, and, and really, that, that was really what, what drew me in. So how has resilience measurement changed over the past 10 years? I mean, it's, it's changed a lot because 10 years ago, when resilience was really just coming to the fore in international development, we were really starting from scratch. Uh, some were even questioning whether it could be, could be measured. So we were really just laying out the basics. And there's a, an article I shared is one of the theme month articles uh, that, that captured the outcomes of a really important meeting in 2014 in which we agreed upon a set of basic principles around uh, resilience measurement. And those stand true to this day. Uh, but I really think we're at the start of a second stage where we're tackling much more advanced issues, getting into much more nuance and detail. And some examples I'd give of that is uh, exploring measuring psychosocial resilience and its importance to protecting people and community well-being in the face of shocks and stresses systems level resilience measurement, and even building on the lessons we've learned in resilience measurement and applying them to the challenge of measuring climate adaptation. There's a huge gap in being able to measure whether or not households, communities, countries are in fact better adapted to the accelerating impacts of climate change. And there's a lot we can draw from uh, on the work on resilience to inform that. I have a question here from our Resilience Links community. Peter Levine from APT Associates in Britain wants to know how to measure resilience in conflict versus non-conflict settings. Yeah, that's a great question. And I think maybe a first way to answer that up front is it's really important to not treat this as a binary conflict versus non-conflict settings, because almost every context in which we're working, uh, there's a range of shocks and stresses that are impacting people's well-being and strengthening the resilience of people, households, communities, and systems to deal not with one shock or stress like droughts or floods, but with the complex risk environment that they're living and working in. And we've seen um, the increase uh, in the extent to which conflict not only exacerbates other shocks and stresses, but is actually driving recurrent and protracted crisis in so many places. So that's a first note I'd make is um, we need to be thinking about conflict as a shock everywhere we're working. But in the context that Peter's talking about, where we're talking about sustained protracted conflicts, I also think it means tailoring the tools that we have now to those particular contexts. And in particular, I would point to uh, focusing not only on measuring sectoral measures of resilience, like access to finance, um, drought tolerant uh, crops, et cetera, but really on those transcendent sources of resilience, things like women's empowerment, confidence, agency, social capital, and in the context of protracted conflict settings, social cohesion, uh, and the role that plays in determining whether households, communities uh, are, are more resilient in the face of uh, conflict shots. My final uh, point I'd like to make on that is this is absolutely a frontier issue in resilience measurement. And I would invite a collaboration with Peter and others um, to help advance work in this space. I think it's gonna take uh, people like Peter who have spent their careers working on conflict, people like me who worked in the resilience space, collaborating and working together to really build out a set of tools for these complex settings. Thank you so much for sharing, Greg. We look forward to featuring more information from you and the University of Arizona. For our community, please comment and interact with our video below. 
and stay tuned for more of our short informational editions of the expert take.